So questions from the homework, and I recognize that some of you are going, oh, I didn't do the homework. I, I, I'll take questions still on Tuesday as well. Any of these you want me to go over? Question three? Okay. Shh, quiet, please. Question three, and I think, I think, I think I sort of like question three. I think I sort of like, there. in fact, you know what? I do like question three. I do like question three. I do like question three. It says a 3.2 kilogram mass moving at four meters per second east hits a wall. The wall exerts a force of 250 newtons to the west for 0 0.07 seconds. Find the final speed and the direction. Okay. We have a collision and we have a force. I think I'm going to be solving this using impulse. I think I'm going to be solving question number three by going. That's the equation you have on your formula sheet. Is that okay? Um, did they tell you the force? Okay, you have to say it louder and uh, be a bit quieter in the corner. Sorry, what? Direction, direct, because now direction is going to matter. I see east and west. Now I'm uber paranoid. Sorry, what? Okay, I'm going to draw a little compass over here. And I think I'm going to let east be positive and west be negative. So I'm going to disagree with your 200 V newtons, and I'm going to say technically what? Is it 350 or 250? I just can't. Okay, hang on. Stop moving. Stop talking. Say it loudly, because every time you've said that first syllable, someone shuffled. 250, thank you. Now you can keep moving. And did they give me the amount of time involved? Point, point zero 0.07 seconds. And what's changing anything? And since momentum is mass times velocity, this is going to be mass v final minus mass v initial. So far, so good. Um, did they tell me the mass? Three point two kilograms. Excellent. So I'm going to write this as negative two hundred and fifty point zero seven equals three point two v final minus three point two. And they did tell me v initial, did they not? What? Direction, direction, direction. Positive four or negative four? Which one? How do you know? Okay, we decided to be consistent here with this, so positive 4. Otherwise, I'd put a negative 4 in there and I'd have a minus minus, which would really change the answer quite a bit. Okay. Uh, let's see what this side is. Negative 250 times 0 0.07. I get negative 17.5 equals 3.2 v final minus 3.2 times 4 12.8 plus 12.8 to both sides yes uh, I'll get negative 17.5 plus 12.8 and you'll notice I got nervous enough about this one that I didn't do this algebraically. I went to numbers because I was a little worried that with all the negatives and positives that I might do something sloppy. I figure I'll be more careful with negatives and positives with numbers, was my thinking. I get this. Negative 4.7 equals 3.2. The final. Now what, Jeanette? And you're going to get a negative. What's the negative velocity telling you? Direction is? Ah, you know what? It hit the wall and bounced off the wall. Its final velocity must have been to the west, whatever the force. And the force that applied, to, uh, that, uh, that hit it, I'm assuming it's a wall or head-on collision, was enough to not only stop it, but to set it backwards negative. Is that okay? That's a great lead into today's lesson.
I have more questions. I want you to put on your thinking caps a little bit here because what I'm going to do is take you from two, uh, one dimension, everything in a nice straight line, uh, where the worst Jeanette that we have to do is let one direction be negative and one direction be positive, and two dimensions where we're going to be doing lots of diagrams tip to tail, tip to tail, tip to tail. And that's really the first question you start to ask yourself in this unit. You say, if I'm using momentum, can I, is everything in a nice straight line? I'll let to the right be positive and to the left be negative. Or to the left be ne positive and to the right be negative, whichever is more convenient. Uh, if I'm not in a nice straight line, raise your level of awareness and we'll talk about how we'll handle it. First of all, example one, a 30 gram bullet moving at 250 meters per second strikes a 50 kilogram wood block, which is at rest, and sticks into it. If the bullet and the block move together after the collision on a frictionless circus, surface, A, write a momentum equation, B, find the speed of the block after the impact, and C, just for giggles, let's find the heat energy created during the collision. Okay, we can do all of that. First of all, is there a collision? Momentum. Momentum. Secondly, are all my motions in a nice straight line, or do you see weird angles mentioned in this question. So straight line means I'm not going to be as paranoid. I'm probably going to let to the right be positive and to the left be negative. Every once in a while when I'm doing a question, I'll notice it's way nicer to let to the left be positive and to the right be negative, but that's rarely. Usually my default is going this way. Psst. Give him an elbow for me, would you? Yeah, it can wait. No, no, he was reading a history book. <laughs> Not the, it wasn't the phone. He was reading, he was reading very small type font with no spaces, which meant it couldn't be this because it didn't have any pictures. And I would think that if Joel's reading, it would have pictures. Oh, okay. Anyway, all right. Joel, you ready? What does Part A say to me, my friend? I always start out by saying my momentum equation is going to be this. The sum of all the initial momentum equals the sum of all the final momentum. That's where I start. That's my, hey, this is one size fits all. And from here, I'm going to break it down a bit further. Uh, I have a bullet and a piece of wood. So I'm going to use B for bullet and W for wood. Or you could use mass one, mass two, whatever. Before the collision, what's moving? The bullet, the wood, or both? Bullet? It's going to be the momentum of the bullet initial. Wham! Collision. Equals is the collision. After the collision, what's moving? The bullet, the wood, or both? Both. Are they stuck together or are they separate? So if they're stuck together, I can write them as one momentum. If they weren't, I'd write them as separate. It's going to be the momentum of both final. And because I'm in a nice straight line, I can go straight to doing algebra. I can use dividing and subtracting things to both sides and adding things. I can use my normal math 8. I don't need to use vector math. Uh, this is going to be mass of the bullet V initial equals mass of the bullet plus mass of the wood v final okay now a said right momentum equation nicole you could argue it's this you could argue it's this you could argue it's that i'm just going to put the a there and i'm going to say there's my starting point B wants me to find the speed of the block. Okay, B. Which of these is the speed of the block? And the bullet, I assume, because they're stuck together. Which of these is the speed of the block and the bullet afterwards? VF. Are these in a nice straight line? Then I can just divide to get the VF by itself. Don't need to go all vector yet. In fact, V final is going to be the mass of the bullet, the initial, all over the mass of the bullet plus the mass 
of the wood. The final is going to be 30 grams is 0 0.03, V is 250, all over 0 0.03 plus 5. Point zero three times two hundred and fifty all over point zero three plus five. You get one point four nine? Yep. One point four nine meters per second. What does C want us to find, Jacob? The heat what? You said energy? Now I'm going to use conservation of energy, not work, because they didn't talk about work. Now I'm going to say for part C, kinetic energy initial plus potential energy initial equals kinetic energy final plus potential energy final and plus heat. Connor, any of these zero? Ah, yeah. In fact, you know what? I wouldn't have minded if you had jumped straight to saying all of my kinetic at the beginning is going to be some kinetic afterwards and whatever is missing must have gone into heat. In fact, this is almost the same physics of when I slammed those two metal spheres together, except there the final kinetic was zero and all of it went into heat. Uh, this is going to be a half m v initial squared. Yep. What's starting at rest? Is everything at rest before the collision? What's moving before the collision? What? Bullet? Isn't the bullet moving before the collision? Yes? But, Nicole, you've raised a good point. Here's what we're going to have to do. Before the collision, Nicole, what was moving before the collision? Only the... So I better make a note. This mass is only the bullet. Okay? Equals a half... After the collision, what was moving? Ah, mass of the block, uh, sorry, the bullet and mass of the wood, V final squared plus heat. Now, this is the first time that our masses aren't going to cancel because we have different masses before the collision. Only one mass was moving. After the collision, two masses were moving, but they both have kinetic energy. Now, can you all look up? This is the most common mistake I saw in yesterday's test. To get the heat by itself, how would I move this over? What's happening in front of the heat right there? What sign is that? A plus sign. How would I move this over then? Yeah, I had about 10 kids divide, okay? I had a whole bunch of students divide, which told me a couple of things. First of all, it told me they probably hadn't done much of the homework because you probably would have found out that that didn't work. And, hey, that's sloppy throwing away math. I'm not going to divide. It's not timesing the heat. How could I divide this over? I have to subtract it over. In fact, I'm going to get this. The heat is going to be a half mass of the bullet, V initial squared, minus a half mass of the bullet plus mass of the wood, V final squared. And I'm running out of room here. V 
move it up a little bit. I would love to show the numbers, but I just don't have room here. I'm going to go to my calculator, I guess. 0.5 times mass of the bullet was 0 0.03 times initial velocity. 0 0.03, Mr. Duke. Times initial velocity, 250 square, 250 squared. Minus 0.5 bracket mass of the bullet plus mass of the block times V final squared. You get 932 joules of heat? Yeah. Heat equals 932 joules. Emily's looking a little beklempt. Didn't work on your calculator? Oh, you're really hungry. Oh, man. Did you get breakfast? Mm. Example two. The diagram below shows two pop cans of unequal mass initially at rest. An explosive charge is detonated between them. Boom! And they fly apart. What can you tell me about their velocities after the explosion? Yeah. How about let's call it small can and big can since you're really having a tough time working your tongue around the words. So go for it. What do we got? I agree small can. First of all, I can even, I think we can even be more specific than that. Let's see. What? I think the small can will go twice as fast, the big can will go half as fast. In opposite what? You know why opposite directions? First of all, is there an explosion? What I said to you was I use momentum when there's a collision or an explosion. And in the shorthand, I said when there's a jeune, explosion, collision, I think momentum. What's my momentum right now? Nicole, what's my momentum right now? So what's my final momentum have to be? has to be okay so I'm gonna go like this zero equals the sum of all the final momentum and this is a nice also segue from Jeanette's question earlier today because since we have them traveling in opposite directions but in straight lines I'll let one direction be positive and one direction be negative I'm gonna get this zero equals momentum of small plus momentum of big. In fact, let's minus the small over. Negative momentum of small equals momentum of big. Momentum is what times what? So I'm going to write this as negative momentum small velocity small equals moment mass big velocity big. So far so good. But what do we know about the masses? How big is the small mass? What did we call it? M. What did we call the big mass? Ooh, let's stick that in. Negative M V small equals 2 M V big. <gasps> Brett, what happens to the M's? They do. And in fact, you get this final answer. The negative 
small velocity is twice as big as the big velocity. What's the negative telling me in the opposite direction? The small one is moving twice as fast as the big one. So we've actually done an algebraic proof of what you intuitively saw. I don't know if I'd look for something quite this detailed. And again, you could always just make up reasonable numbers and crunch the numbers and say, oh, it's twice as big. That's, that's fine too, but there's a lovely algebraic proof. Yep. Which one is bigger? This is going twice as fast as that. Right? In other words, if this is going 10 meters per second, how fast is this going? 5. To make this equal, I better put a 2 there so I can get 10 equals 10. Don't feel bad. Everybody does that. Twice as fast. Why isn't the 2 on the twice as fast side? Because the 2 needs to be on the twice as slow side to make the equation out. So that's all been in a nice straight line. Some terminology here, and now we're going to go two dimensions. Important terminology. There are two main types of collisions. There are two main types of collisions. The first type of collision is an inelastic or completely inelastic collision. The second type of collision is an elastic collision. Unfortunately, first of all, the words sound an awful lot alike. When I say inelastic and an elastic, you have to listen very closely. I always try and pause. There's inelastic collisions, and then there are elastic collisions. What's the difference between the two? Inelastic is when the masses stick together. For example, if two cars T-bone each other and the wreckage sticks together and they move off together. Or, uh, Nicole, like the block and the bullet that we just did, those stuck together, that would be an inelastic collision. Elastic collisions are when the masses bounce off of each other. Curling. Body checking in hockey. Playing pool and uh, hitting a billiard ball with, a, with another billiard ball. Oh, inelastic tackling. Ideally, you're hanging on and sticking together. Yes. So we have inelastic. Then we have partly elastic and perfectly elastic. You know how I remember the difference? What's an elastic band? What's that? You all know when it tell me what when I say the word elastic band, what's an elastic band? Matt, you said the magic word. What? Here's what I remember. Elastic rubber bounce, they bounce off each other. Inelastic is the opposite of bouncing off each other. No, nah, stuck together. So if you're looking for a dumb way to remember, I all and I do this still after fifteen years well you know, years from taking my physics, whenever someone says it's an elastic collision, you'll see me go unfocused for a second. I'm thinking elastic. Elastic band, rubber band, a oh, bounce! They didn't stick together, they bounced off each other. Okay? Now, in all collisions, in all collisions, momentum is conserved. In other words, the sum of all momentum initial equals the sum of all momentum final. In a perfectly elastic collision, in a perfectly elastic collision, you have something else that's conserved. In a perfectly elastic collision, kinetic energy is conserved. Now, What's a perfectly elastic collision? Well, for a perfectly elastic collision to occur, you need the following. Both objects must have the same mass. They must rebound it apart at a 90 degree angle. So if the question says it's perfectly elastic, you can assume the angle they fell apart at was 90 degrees. I'm not going to do a huge song and dance about this. You are going to see in the review a couple of times, once or twice, there'll be a question and you'll go, hey, Mr. Dewitt, they didn't tell me the second mass and they didn't tell me what angle they flew apart at. And I'll say, does it say perfectly elastic? And you'll say yes. I'll say, well, then they don't need to tell you the second mass and they don't need to tell you the angle. 
Example 3. A 60 kilogram hockey player traveling 20 meters towards the north collides with a 50 kilogram hockey player traveling one meter per second towards the west. The two become entangled together. That means this is inelastic because they stuck together. Can you see that this is no longer in a nice straight line, Kara? See the directions? Okay. We're going to start out the same, but we're going to be way more paranoid. And they want to find V final. With what velocity do they move up after the collision? Kara, do you see the word north mentioned in this question? I'm going to draw a compass rose over here. Is that okay, Trevor? Okay. Trevor, is there a collision? I'm going to start out by going the sum of all of the momentum before the collision has to equal the sum of all of the momentum after the collision. So that hasn't changed. Before the collision, what was moving? Mass 1, mass 2, or both? Sorry? Both? Were they stuck together before the collision? Okay. So I'm going to say this. Before the collision, I have mass 1 initial. That'll be the first hockey player, Andrew. Plus mass 2 initial. That'll be the second hockey player. Equals... Wham! Collision. After the collision, who's moving? Mass 1, mass 2, or both? Both stuck together or separate? Now right now some of you are saying, Mr. Duick, this is exactly, almost exactly the same equation as you've used on the straight linear ones so far. Now, though, we are, not, we, are not, we are not going to say momentum is mass times velocity. We will eventually. Now we're going to dulp. We're going to dulp. We're going to draw a picture. What direction is the first hockey player traveling? Plus... What direction is the second hockey player traveling? Equals, I'll leave the right side blank for a second. Now, I, how will I add these two arrows together? Draw them. Problem. I don't know how big the arrows are. Oh, yes, I do. Momentum is what times what? So the mass of the first hockey player is 60 times the velocity is 2. You know what? This arrow is 120 long. Is that okay, Connor? And what about the second guy? Well, his mass was 50. His velocity was 1. This arrow is 50 long. How long is the first arrow? How long is the second arrow? So if I want this to look roughly to scale, this arrow should be a little more than twice as long as this guy. Okay? So ready? Hundred and twenty. Fifty. See the difference by the way? This was the same, but now we're actually adding pictures. What's my resultant? I, what am I, how am I going to draw it, first of all? It's always from the tail of the first one to the tip of the second one. You know what? They're going to move off together in that direction. And I'm going to call that on my diagram Z momentum of both final. Now, this is a lovely right angle triangle, which means I can use Sokotoa and Pythagoras. So let's do that. How can I find out how big this is? Well, momentum of both squared is going to be 50 squared plus 120. It's Pythagoras. And Zay, when you did that and then you took the square root, 
what did you tell me the momentum of both is equal to? Okay. Sorry? Don't care yet because they didn't ask me to find the momentum final. What did they ask me to find, Zay? Final velocity. That's momentum. Momentum is what times what? Ah, so I'm going to say this. The mass of both V final equals 130. Emily, how can I find out the final velocity? Okay. V final is going to be 130 divided by 60 plus 50. What's the final velocity that they move off together at? Connor, what'd you get? Oh, never mind. I thought you were typing. Sorry. You could be if you wanted to. John, what'd you get? Brett? I can't hear you. 1.18 meters per second. And we're still wrong, technically. We haven't found the velocity. You know what we found? The speed. Velocity has two things, magnitude and what? So, V final vector equals 1.18 meters per second at... There's my direction. Zay, which trig function can I use to find this angle? Tan theta equals, remember all this, folks? Opposite over adjacent. How do I find an angle? Oh, yeah, shift tan. Making sure I'm in degrees. I am. And I get 20, 22 points. I'll go 23 degrees. Twenty three degrees what of what? Jacob. West of north. By the way, do you see how as soon as you go nonlinear, not in a straight line? Uh that's a lot more work. But it opens up some very cool questions that we can solve, because I'm gonna tell you right now, most car crashes aren't in a nice straight line. You get T bone, you get broadsided, you don't hit head on. Turn the page. Let's suppose in example four. Oh, by the way, I love example four. I love example four, except. I'm going to put a little star next to this. This is advanced. I'm not going to cross it out, but we may not do it today. Finding the final amount of kinetic energy and the initial amount of kinetic energy and then subtracting. There is one like this in your review. In fact, you know what? I am going to temporarily cross this out. Let's do that. But on your test in this unit, the written section is going to be a collision at an angle. Can you see, Brett, just by glancing at the diagram that we're not in a straight line? Is there a right angle here? This is going to be sine law, cosine law stuff. Is there a collision? What do they want me to find? Okay. You said there was a collision? I'm going to start out exactly the same by going the sum of all the initial momentum equals the sum of all the final momentum. Mitsu, that's my fallback standby, get my thoughts organized. My question's no longer blank. But now I'm raising my level of paranoia, of, of, of being careful, because I'm saying the angle is going to be careful here. Uh, before the collision, 
Nicole, what's moving? Mass 1, mass 2, or both? Which one? No, how, how, which, which of your answers that you said was correct? Mass 1, I agree. Why? How do you know? Oh, stationary. Okay. Yes? So, mass 1 initial equals after the collision, what's moving? Mass 1, mass 2, or both? Nicole. Are they stuck together or are they separate? This is an elastic collision, not perfectly elastic because the masses aren't the same and it's not a 90 degree angle, which would make everything way easier. Anyways, it's an elastic collision. So I'm going to write this, Nicole. Momentum of the first one, final, plus momentum of the second one, final. Underneath this, I'm going to dalt. The first momentum looks an awful lot, it seems, like that. See it? Equals. Looks like the final momentum of this small mass, looking at the picture, looks like that. Looks like the final momentum of mass 2, looking at the picture, looks kind of like that. I can fill in some of these because momentum is what times what, Brie? 16. Yeah? Right? Uh, oh, this is mass. Oh, ooh, I can do this one. 2 times 6.7, which is... I think 13.4, 13.4. Can I fill in this one? Nope. So I'm just going to label that as mass two final. Okay. How will I draw this vector triangle? Well, how will I add these two together? And here's the nice thing. When I add these two together, they're supposed to give me a horizontal line because that's what that is. So here's how I would draw this. Watch. I would go, okay, I got a 13.4. I know to stop drawing this right here. Not this far and not shallower. The reason I know is Apparently, when I add momentum 1 and momentum 2 final, it's supposed to add to exactly horizontal 16. This plus this has to give me that. Oh, and they gave me an angle. Did they not? Somewhere in my diagram originally? See it, see it, see it? Apparently, this angle right here is 10 degrees. Oh, 10 degrees. Sokotoa? No, no right angle. Sine law? Well, I would use the sine law if I knew both of those or both of those or both of those. Do I have a pair anywhere? This is cosine law. In fact, it's going to be cosine law almost every time. And you're going to get good at the cosine law. What is the cosine law, you ask? What is the cosine law, you ask? Yes? Cosine law says this. How much room do I have? Lots of room. Still good. C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine big C. Where, Mitsu, there's C right there, what I'm trying to find. Momentum of object 2 final squared equals, what's A? Nice thing is, as long as you identify C correctly as being across from the angle, 
doesn't matter what you pick as A and B. It's going to be those two. So I'm going to go A is I hack 16 squared, B is 13.4 squared, minus 2 times 16 times 13.4, cosine, what's big C? 10 degrees. The nice thing is, if you've listened to my advice about getting a good calculator, you should be able to go do this in one fell swoop. 16 squared plus 13.4 squared minus 2 times 16 times 13.4 cosine of 10. And I get 13.27, which is wrong. What, 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 Brett? Yeah, I found momentum squared. The final momentum of object 2 is going to be the square root of that. 3.6434. And I'll carry a few extra sig figs. Because they didn't ask me for the final momentum. Brett, you're looking puzzled. Am I wrong? Double check. Uh, are you have a graphing calculator? Okay. Make sure you're in degrees because the graphing calculators by default go into radians if you've ever reset them or replaced the batteries or anything like that. I think I'm right. In fact, I'm sure I'm right. And then square root. Yes? Brandon, momentum is what times what? Our vendor, momentum is what times what? So this is the momentum, and I want to find the velocity. I think I'm going to go like this then. Velocity final is going to be 3.6434 divided by mass 2. That's going to give me the final velocity of the second object. Actually, it's going to give me the final speed. You have to do some more trig. What do you get for speed of object 2? What was the mass of object 2? I've scrolled down. It was, oh, 10? Oh, I can do that in my head then. 0.364 meters per second. It's not moving very fast, which it shouldn't because it's a big, heavy mass, and it only got grazed by a much smaller mass. At... I'd like to find that angle. I'd like to find, don't write this down because I'm really going to gum up this diagram, that angle. Where does that angle appear in my triangle? Can you see the Z? I think if I want to find this angle, what I really need to find is that angle and then go what of what for that. Does that make sense? Connor, are you good? Sure? Because you're not looking good. You are? Okay. So I'm going to go like this. That's theta. That's theta. How can I find theta? Sokoto? No. Sign law. Wait a minute, we couldn't use the sign law because we didn't have a pair. We do now have a pair because we just figured this out, which is why I carried a few extra decimals on my calculator. The sign law says this. The sign of our mystery angle divided by... Okay, Mr. Duke, turn that off now. I'm going to call this theta. Come on! I'm going to call this theta, going to call this theta. Sorry, I forgot to turn up. What's going on here? Change colors, Mr. Duke. Let's try this again. Hmm. Problem. 
Let's do this, Mr. Duke. Ha-ha! There we go. I don't know what was going on there. So I'm going to call that theta and that theta. This is the angle that I really want, but I can only find it by finding that one. It's going to be the sine law because I'm going to have this, the sine of my mystery angle divided by what's across from it, 13.4, equals the sine of 10 degrees divided by what's across from it, which I didn't know at first, but now, Emily, I know it's 3.6434. Make sure you use the momentum and not the velocity. When I cross multiply, I'll get sine theta equals 13.4 sine of 10 degrees divided by 3.6434. By the way, this is almost as much work as you'll do for any one question all year. Thirteen point four sine of ten divided by three point six four three four. And I, oh, theta is point six degrees. Oh no 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 no! I didn't find theta. What have I found? Sine theta. How do I find theta? Second function sign of my current answer. Ah! 39.7 or 38 degrees. Sorry, 40, or 40 degrees. I'll go with 39.7. 39.7 degrees. What of what? What is that? What of what? Mitchell. North of east. Seven marks. Ready? One mark. Two marks. Three marks. Four marks. Five marks. Probably actually a half mark and a half mark. Probably also one mark for that. Six marks. And I'd find another way to give you part marks in there. Can you skip steps? Yeah. Would I? Not unless I got really good. Yep. Okay. You know what? Your written question is going to have probably three collisions. Probably one at a nice right angle, which takes, um, dare I say it, way less time. There's going to be two where they are not in a nice right angle. Now, I'm going to also, though, say, although the math is tricky, if you're careful, it's reasonably plug and chug. There's just lots of room to make sloppy mistakes, too. Okay. We're going to come back to example five. We're going to come back to example six. Example 7. A 10 kilogram curling stone is sliding along the ice, no friction. When it hits a stationary 18 kilogram bucket of sand after the collision, the curling stone's velocity is 3 meters per second east, and the bucket has a velocity of 2.3 meters per second at 43 degrees south of east. What's the initial velocity? So here, instead of saying V final, it's saying, hey, how fast was the stone coming in at? And this one is trickier also because no picture. We're going to have to really think. Ready? Is there a collision? Are we in a nice straight line, Emily? In other words, 
can I just let to the right be positive, to the left be negative, and just do my usual cross, multiply, divide, and subtract junk? How can you, sorry, easily at almost a glance tell that we're not in a straight line? South of east, east, north, south, angles. So you ready? Are we in a nice straight line? No! Going to get a little more paranoid then. I'm going to draw a little compass rose over here so I don't do something dumb. And, but now I repeat, I worked my way back through the same set of questions before the collision. What was moving, mass one, mass two, or both? The momentum of the stone initial. Wham! There's a collision. After the collision, what was moving? Mass one, mass two, or both? Stuck together or separate? Inelastic. Momentum of the stone final plus momentum of the bucket final. Doll. Why? Because, Emily, this is not in a nice straight line. Did they give me the initial direction of the st of the stone as it was coming in? I'm going to hold off on that drawing that then. I'll, I'll come back to it. I am going to put a little equal sign here. Did they give me the final direction of the stone? Oh, yeah. Due east. And Velocity is not conserved. Momentum is conserved. Mass, velocity, due east with a momentum of 30. Plus. Did they give me a direction for the bucket? Yep. What? 43 degrees south of east. There's east, 43 degrees south of east. How big is the momentum of the bucket? What's the bucket's mass? 18, what's the bucket's velocity? Oh, okay. 18 times 2.3. 41.4. Still not quite sure what this one looks like. But I can tell you what this looks like. How would I add these together, Bree? Draw them. Okay. As a picture, this is going to look like this. 30. 41.3. Oh! What's the resultant here look like? That's momentum of the first, what did I call it? I used the letter S, didn't I? Momentum of the stone initial. Which if I go back here means it must have looked like this. Caitlin, is this nice right angle Sokotoa? <laughs> no. And in fact, I got a real problem right now. I don't even have an angle. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I got this angle. Yeah? Which is this angle. How big is this angle? Caitlin, what? You're right. Doesn't help me at all. How big is that angle? What do those two add to? Okay. So how big is this angle inside the triangle here? 137? And I can tell I'm going to run out of room, so bear with me while I do this. Yeah.
How will I find momentum of stone initial? Well, cosine law. Momentum of stone initial squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine. Oh, hang on, Mr. Duick. You're writing it the way that they don't like. My bad. You guys like uh, a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c. I'll be honest, Nicole. I don't have the actual formula memorized. What I know is this squared equals that thing squared plus that thing squared minus 2 times that times that cos that. It's the psi angle side across. So this is going to be 30 squared plus 41.3 squared minus 2. Don't forget the 2. Times 30 times 41.3 cosine of 137. And, and again, Mitchell, this equation is on your formula sheet. You'll probably end up memorizing it for this unit, though, because you use it so often. 30 squared plus 41.3 squared minus 2 times 30 times 41.3 times the cos... 137. What the? It's traveling 4,000... Oh, no, 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 That's uh, a square root, square root, square root, right? Oh, and that's not its final velocity anyway. That's its final mom uh, initial momentum. Uh, 66.468. Yep. Yeah. 41.4 or 41.3? I thought it was 41.3. Three, wasn't it? Oh, I put a four there and a three there. Oh, that's silly of me. Uh, this was uh, whoop. this was eighteen times two point three. Yes. I think it's forty one point four. Kara, candy for you. If you see me do something dumb like that, try and point it out sooner so that all the people at home aren't freaking out when they're looking at this lesson online. Which is going to change that as well, and that as well. Put a 4 there, Mr. Duick. Let's go try that again. Woo! 4. 4. So you get that, and then square root. How about 66.563? Thank you, Kara. Okay, that's the that's the momentum initial. How do I find the velocity initial? If I have no momentum, how can I find? Well, first I can find the speed. Divide by the mass. So, so I'm running out of room. Velocity of the stone initial. is going to be this number divided by the mass of the stone, which was 10. Initial velocity is going to be 6.5, sorry, 6.66. Yep. Get the homework off someone. At... Sean, what angle? This angle right here. Which is going to be what of what, by the way? South of east. Yeah, it was coming in south of east. And then, I guess, it got deflected straight sideways and continued this way. So, let's see. Sine of theta, I should have left more room clearly, over 41.4 equals the sine of the angle that I do know over the side that I just figured out, which was 66.563. 
when I cross multiply I'll get 41.4 times the sine of 137 divided by 66.563 and I take the inverse sine of that sorry I'd love to be able to fit this on I think you get 25 degrees south of east We're going to temporarily pause here. I'm going to give you a couple of questions to try, and then we'll pick up with this on Tuesday. What questions can you try right now? Uh, strangely enough, there's no homework attached to this, is there? Ha, huh, that's a little silly. Okay, revising that, I have a take-home quiz for you, not on today's stuff, but on the last few days' worth of stuff.